We declare war on every demonic force in the universe in Jesus' name. Because if you ain't declaring war on every demonic force in the universe, you ain't no Christian. Can you lower this just a little bit? Thank you. Hallelujah. Good evening. This is the night the Lord has made, and we will rejoice because we have a choice. We have power. power. He who is in us is greater than he is in the world. We need to start using it. Glory. Glory. You know, things are getting ready to happen intensely. Intensely. You know, we're getting ready for a full, blown out, full eclipse blood move coming this month. Do you know that President Trump was born on a blood moon? Do you know that 700 days after his birth, the state of Israel, the country of Israel was established? Seven. Hello? Do you know that the day he was inaugurated, he was 70 years old, seven months, and seven days? Seven, seven, seven. Think it's a coincidence? No. God set that all up. <laughs> Do you know that on the 70th anniversary of Israel, Donald Trump brought the United States Embassy to Jerusalem and decreed that Jerusalem is now the capital of Israel on the 70th anniversary. Is that a coincidence? No. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, we are, we are in such an, a time and a season and on the cutting edge of everything that can explode so instantly. Instantly. But we know that when chaos comes, revival comes. Amen? Chaos, revival always comes out of chaos. So we know things got to get shaken. There's a shaking getting ready to happen. And you ain't seen nothing. But you will. It's going to shake this country. And it's going to shake every other country. But it is coming in, and it is around the corner, and it's in this year. This is not years down the road. It's in this year. It will escalate these next two years, but in this year, you're going to see a big jump, a big escalation. God is going to be exposed in all kinds of stuff. You know, many organizations and companies and religious organizations, many of them say they are faith-based. But they're faith-based of all cultures and religions, organizations, even political parties are faith-based. Their basis is of their purpose and agenda. It's based on their belief system that is launched from their foundational doctrine. I said their foundational doctrine. Actually, we see a bunch of walking zombies indoctrinated by socialistic, educated forms because they have a foundation that they have built by doctrine. Amen? Faith-based. In other words, the base they call faith is because they believe in a doctrine. The problem is it ain't right. 1 Corinthians 3. Oh, hallelujah. First Corinthians 3, verse 9. Faith-based. That's the name of tonight's title. <clears throat> In verse 9, let's speak it. For we are God's fellow workers and you are God's field. You are God's building. Turn your neighbor and tell them you're the building of God. 
According to the grace of God which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. How many of y'all know that the devil likes to come and exchange your true belief system for a false one? Amen. Amen. And verse 11, for no other foundation can anyone what? Can anyone build than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So there's no other foundational doctrine that is true. That's what he's saying. There's no other foundation except for Jesus Christ. None. None. You can get all of this worldly, all uh, philosophical, all new agey, all kinds of doctrines that can feel good, Tastes good, look good, but it's a lie. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clearer, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on endures, he will receive a reward. Hello. But if anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss. But he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him, for the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool, that he may become wise." For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. Therefore, let no one boast in men, for all things are yours. Wow. All things are yours. Again, there is no other foundation which is laid that can stand except which is laid by Jesus Christ. All other doctrines, belief systems, and carnal wisdom or knowledge of the worldly <laughs> wisdom, including riches, goodness, humanitarian, all of these other things that they proclaim will be counted as, that is counted as good and evil. But there's only one doctrine that is counted as righteousness and justice. See, there's doctrines from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and there's a lot of organizations that proclaim to be good, and but they are evil. But there's only one family and kingdom that produces righteousness and justice. All others will be good or evil. Only Christ's foundation produces the fruit of righteousness and justice, nothing else. So you may see a lot of stuff going on that have a, a, an appearance of good. You know, if you knew what was behind the Shriners, that's a demonic organization. And they do a lot of good things for children, but I don't know how many children they do the good thing for. You got UNICEF. You got all other organizations that proclaim to do good deeds for mankind and humanitarian operations, even the Red Cross. When you find out what's behind them and supports them and what their doctrine is, it will blow you away. But Daddy's about to expose all this stuff soon. Oh, hallelujah. 1 Timothy chapter 4. They have a form of godliness, but they deny power. They deny the true doctrine of Christ Jesus. They don't give glory to God. None of them do. 
They give glory to their own operations. They ask for funding. And they use people to promote their funding that have either been crippled or helped. Is everybody okay? You know, when the Holy Spirit said to me, I want you to talk about faith-based, I'm thinking, I, I thought my mind went in every other place than here. Hallelujah. But he said, I want my people to know because I am arming them. This is a part of what he showed us, a strategies and tactics to expose our enemy and strategies with wisdom from above to overcome the things that are going to be influenced because the enemy is going to come in multiple, multiple ways and try and suck in people. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. Now the Spirit, what? Expressly says that in a latter time some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared. Seems like that about a lot of people these days. With a hot iron forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving. For it is what? Sanctified by what? The word of of God in prayer. So, there is no other doctrine that sanctifies but the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Doctrine of demons and deceiving spirits are building foundational organizations that people are following and even killing for. They produce no fruit of the Spirit of Christ. Christ warned us about this end-time battle over faith-based foundations that would unite together against the followers of Christ foundations. It's called fake faith-based. Many will and have fallen away proclaiming they know Christ but vote and promote for the things God disapproves of because of the anti-Christ false foundation. It doesn't... <laughs> It doesn't come against Christ, but its foundational belief system does. Does everybody get it? And that's why, because when people, you know, people aren't coming against it, but what their foundation belief system is causes to come against it. And uh, 2 John chapter 1. Verse 4, let's speak it together. For I rejoice greatly that I have found some of your children walking in truth as we receive commandment from the Father. And now I plead with you, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment to you, but that which we had from the beginning that we love one another. This is love that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment that as you have heard from the beginning... You should walk in it. For many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and antichrist. Look to yourselves that we do not lose things we work for, but that we may receive a what? Full reward. Now look at this here. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. Now, this is critical. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. This means that if an individual does not abide in all of the doctrine of Christ, he's not of God. So if he only abides in partial of it, but not in all of it, he's not of God. Does everybody understand that? Because he's walking in mixed belief system. Is everybody okay? Now look at this. And do not receive him into your house, nor greet him. For he who greets him shares in his evil 
deeds. Now, this is wild. He does not have God if they don't follow, believe, receive, and execute the doctrine of Christ. If you compromise his foundational sayings, you don't stand on the truth, the solid rock of Christ Jesus. But you're standing on seeking sand. That's why many people have been taken captive in their minds, in their belief systems, in their souls. People that you thought were wonderful, they got, man, they, there's a lot of people out there that are sweet people until you find out what their belief system is. Why? Because they're good, they're sweet, but their belief system is evil. And they do not have God because they don't believe in his doctrine, only partial of it. In Exodus 29, Exodus 29. Everyone here knows people that in this condition. Many know people in the condition that, you know, there are people that have brought people to Christ and have fallen into a mixed doctrine. That's why Jesus said, Many will come to me in that day saying, Lord, I prophesied in your name. I cast out devils in your name. I fed the hungry in your name. I brought water in your name. I did all of these things in your name. And he'll say, I don't know you. Why? Because lawlessness is not for believing in the full doctrine. If you don't believe in the full doctrine, the foundational doctrine of Christ Jesus, and if you're not practicing in it, then you're deceived. Amen? Then you're practicing lawlessness. Is everybody okay? Exodus 29, verse 20. You know, after I'd received this message, I began to see then where the Lord talked about the second wind coming and raining. And he, what was he going to do? He was going to bring provision, but he was also going to release strategies and revelation knowledge so that his people can get prepared for what is coming. And hopefully some people will awaken that have actually been put to sleep. Oh, hallelujah. In verse 29, and the holy garments of Aaron shall be in, <clears throat> oh, sorry, verse 20. <laughs> then you shall, chapter 29, verse 20. Then you shall kill the ram and take some of its blood and put it on the tip of the right ear of Aaron and on the tip of the right ear of his sons, on the thumb of his right hand and on the big toe of his right foot and sprinkle the blood all around the altar. Now the altar here is associated with foundation. And you shall take some of the blood that is on the altar and some of the anointing oil and sprinkle it on Aaron and on his garments, on his sons and on the garments of his sons with him. And he and his garments shall be what? Hallowed or sanctified and his sons and his sons' garments with them. Now, I want you to understand that this is Old Covenant, Old Testament. The altar is a representation of foundation that is now built in the temple of mankind by Christ Jesus. All, this is the only foundation that is built with the blood and the anointing oil. There is no other foundation in the world, in the universe, in the galaxies that is built with blood. Does everybody get it? And anointing oil. That's representation of Christ. No man has eternal life without eating what? 
his flesh and drinking his blood or drinking from the river of life, the anointing. 2 Corinthians 6. Faith based. There's a lot of people that think they know God and they're going to find out that God don't know them. Oh, hallelujah. You know, think about, I mean, God is merciful. He's merciful. He's grace. You know, His mercy and grace abound all the time. But you know, he warns us about the spirit of error and about the spirit of truth. He warns us all the time about that. If you really read the word of God and you're built on the foundation of the anointing of Christ Jesus, which is our foundation, but the foundation of the anointing is the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. Amen? Amen? then you'll be able to realize in the things that he is requiring, especially being baptized in the Holy Spirit, he didn't ask people to get baptized, he commanded them to. That is the commandment of Christ Jesus to be baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Why? So they can grab more, understand more. Is everybody Okay. 2 Corinthians, is that what I said to those? Chapter 6 and verse 15. And what accord is Christ with Belial? And what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them, I will walk among them, and I'll be their God, and they will be my people. If you'll do this, come out from among them. What does he mean by come out from among them? Not only people, places, and things, but false doctrines. And be separate, says the Lord. In other words, be separate so that you are sanctified by the word of God. And don't touch what is unclean. False doctrine is unclean. But they're good people. They're unclean. Amen? Amen? Don't touch what is unclean, and I'll receive you. And I'll be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Again, was he warning us to come out from among the doctrines of men influenced by evil forces against Christ and his words? In John chapter 1. Can everybody understand me? <laughs> I might sound like I have a clothespin on my nose. <laughs> Believe me, I feel like I have a clothespin on my nose. <laughs> my ears finally popped in one of those songs. I was like, all right. I wanted to tell David, keep turning the music up. I couldn't hear it. I went to my wife. I said, look, I can't hear the music. <laughs> We did come back from nine degree weather. It was snapping cold. But it got warmer today. It got up to 23, 26. And we left just in time because it's getting too below here shortly. And they're expecting a big storm for, another, for a week. Thank you, Jesus, for Florida. <laughs> I love Florida, and I love seats that have heats and heaters in them. Whoa. Let me tell you, one thing you hate is going to a restaurant and then going out to the car after you just got done eating, and it's like 2 degrees or 10 degrees or even 20 degrees, and everything is stinking cold and stiff, and you're just sitting in the car shivering. But praise God, where we were at, they bought a new car, and you get in the car and you press a button instantly. And the thing goes, boom, nice. 
<laughs> That's all I kept saying. I love these seats. <laughs> I love these seats. <laughs> Next restaurant. <laughs> Hallelujah. John, first, John chapter 1. The Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. A man cannot live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen? So the Word of God, we know, is the foundational doctrine of Christ Jesus, which was before me and you. Amen? He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and darkness does not comprehend it. Hello, verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. In other words, God's plan of escape and truth, his doctrine. So we know that the word of God and the words of God were to build the foundational belief system. And it was confirmed in himself. <laughs> His own creative words brought him here. Amen? <laughs> Becoming a body for him in this realm. And reconnected those that are willing to stand completely on his truth, the substance of all creation called his word. Hebrews 11. Faith-based. Hebrews. Hebrews 11. So we know that those in darkness cannot comprehend. Until they first come to the light, then they can comprehend what is spoken of the light. In verse 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now, what is the substance? Christ, the Word, the Anointed One and His anointing, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. In other words, he spoke it and it came forth. There's no other doctrine that can speak it and come forth. There's no other foundation. <laughs> Again, those in darkness... And those that have compromised the foundational truth of Christ will not be able to comprehend. They are still being manipulated by doctrines of men and influenced by evil forces. Which may seem and have a form of good, but is actually evil. Oh, hallelujah. <clears throat> many faith-based organizations have taken many Christians out of position. Again, the foundation of Christ is the only foundation that produces justice and righteousness. In Psalms 18, Psalm 18, starting at verse 1. It's 
everybody there? Is everybody okay? I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my what? My rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength in whom I will trust. My shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. The pangs of death surrounded me. The floods of ungodliness made me afraid. The sorrows of hell surrounded me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called out upon the Lord, and I cried out to my God. He heard my voice from his temple, and my cry came before him, even to his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundation of the hills also quaked and were shaken because he was angry. Smoke went out from his nostrils and devouring fire from his mouth. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down with darkness under his feet. He rode upon the cherub and flew. He flew upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. His canopy around him was dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. For the brightness before him, his thick clouds passed with hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord thundered from heaven. The Most High uttered his voice, hailstone and coals of fire. He sent out his arrows and scattered the foe, lightning in abundance, and vanquished them. Then the channels of the sea were seen and the foundations of the world were uncovered. At your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. I believe this is happening right now. A lot of things are being uncovered. He sent from above, he took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy, from those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity. But the Lord was my support. He also brought me out into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, not goodness, according to the cleanness of my hands. He has recompensed me. For I kept the ways of the Lord. I have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me. I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also blameless before him, and I kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness and according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. Well, how did they stay clean? How did he produce righteousness and justice? By maintaining and standing on the foundational doctrine of Jesus Christ all the way through. He called him his rock. That's why anything else that mixed with it, any other doctrine becomes sinking sand. Amen? It's amazing. I don't know if you heard about the, about the little rock. See, there's this little rock in Micah. Mike, Mecca, excuse me. There's this little rock in Mecca. It's a meteorite. It's a black little rock that... They placed in this place, they believe it came from Allah. Hello. And they built this big cube around it. This big, ginormous cube around it. And they walk around it and they have this yearly celebration where all Muslims, millions of them and gazillions of them, they come there and they walk around this rock and worship this meteor. Chunk a little piece. Again, they're trying to duplicate the true rock. See, their rock is dead. Ours is alive. Now, I share with you about the exposure of what's happening. See, people don't realize these things. They don't know what's going on with them. But they worship a rock that fell from the sky. Even Lucifer fell from the sky. Amen? Now, a couple days ago, I was reading, because every day I call destructive fire down in Mecca. I'm waiting for that place to blow up. But God didn't blow it up, but he sent roaches. He sent uh, locusts and crickets. The place was flooded in the holiest place in the world of the Islamic belief system. Even the roaches came and walked around the rock. Crickets jumped all around the rock. It was desecrated. 
according to them. Of course, they were believing it on somebody high, uh, breeding them over here. <laughs> no, that was daddy. <laughs> that was daddy. Reminded me just what the plagues of Moses, remember? <laughs> oh, snap. That's dad exposing them. Living on the rock of salvation is Jesus Christ. Again, their rock is dead. Ours is alive. Because we stand on the word of truth and the power and the presence of God, the substance of the anointing, there is always victory. That's how all things work to the good. Glory. Romans 14. Because we believe, we receive, and we execute the word of God. Romans 14. I don't know what's going to happen to those that preach once saved, always saved. I, you know, I, whew, it's going to be a big barbecue. I pray they get it together before they give their last breath. Can you imagine that? Go ahead and you can go out and do anything. You can go sin. You can do anything you want. If you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you know how much blood is on their hands? Of course, then they say, well, they were never saved. Hello. It says, confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Believe he rose from the dead. Repent for your sins. Anyone who calls on his name will be saved. Amen? It's a simple doctrine of salvation. But it isn't simple to walk. Amen. <laughs> That's why he called it the path was narrow and difficult. If it wasn't narrow and difficult, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> sinning isn't narrow and difficult. It's wide and broad. Amen. That's the doctrine of Lucifer. Do what you feel like. Amen. Romans 14, verse 19. Therefore, let us pursue the what? Things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food or idols. Also, things indeed are, are pure. But it is evil for a man who eats with offense. It is good to neither eat meat nor drink wine nor do anything by which your brother stumbles. Hello. Or is uh, offended or is made weak. In other words, be careful. Do you have faith? Have it to yourself before God. Happy is he who, who does not condemn himself in what he approves. That's according to food. But anyone who approves sin is condemned. But he who doubts is condemned if he eats. Because he does not eat from faith. Now, in other words, he's not cooperating with the foundation of God's word. Amen? Now look at this. What's the next thing? For whatever is not from faith is what? Whoa. In other words, so whatever is not from the foundation, which is the substance, faith is the substance, which is the word of God. Anything that's not of faith is sin. In other words, if you're not living out of faith and you're living out of self, it's called sin. That's why the word tells us, deny yourself. Pick up the cross, pick up the sword and fight, then you can follow. Not from faith is not from the foundational belief system in Christ. It is sin. 
is from the foundational belief system by men influenced by evil forces of darkness. First John chapter 2. In verse 18, faith-based. In verse 18, little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, right? And they've produced many religions and doctrines of men, or doctrines of demons, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest, that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. In other words, what you've heard from the beginning is the foundational doctrine of Christ Jesus. And this is a promise that has promised us eternal life. These things I've written to you concerning those who try to deceive you, manipulate you, cause you to believe in something different. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie, and just as it is taught you, you will abide in him, in the anointing, and in the foundational doctrine of Jesus Christ. Does everybody understand that? The anointing of the foundation knows all things. Those that compromise the complete foundational word are not his. By compromising it, they're not his. Does anybody understand it? All those that are involved and promote pro-abortion, they are compromising it. That approve of gay agendas, they are compromising it. That approve of adultery, they are compromising it. Idolatry, they are compromising it. So if they vote, they approve. And that means that they are compromising it. But I want you to understand that the enemy will make it look like people are promoting and voting for something good because they like to put a good thing in front of the evil. So people are distracted by attractions of things that are good. Oh, they're doing this for children, they're doing this for this, they're doing this for this. Then they ignore the pure wickedness of what's happening, like murdering unborn children. Do you know that New York State now is approving Como, who's nothing but a full-blown demon in the flesh? Is he the mayor there? Governor? Governor yeah. yeah. He is putting forth to promote and put into law that you can have an abortion all the way up to the end. You talk about sick puppy? Let me tell you, a lot of New Yorkers are really fed up with this. If God don't take them out, somebody might will. Anyways. This is what's going on. It's not only there, it's all over the place. That's why they call it a democratic party. Their doctrine, foundational belief system is on the doctrines of demons. Somebody get it? And there are other political organizations. This is not just in the United States. This is a global event 
or others are finding out how wicked their government is. But you don't see that on the news. There's an uprising because of an awakening. People are trying to overthrow their governments that are wicked. And they're being murdered. But you won't see that on mainstream media. Because the mainstream media is owned by Satan's kingdom. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go a little further. First John chapter 5. In verse 1. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Is everybody there? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and everyone who loves him, who begot, also loves him, who is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Why? Because faith, the substance of faith, is God's doctrine, Jesus Christ. Amen? So we overcome everything of the world because the ruler of this world is Satan. His doctrines are doctrines behind that are fulfilled by doctrines of demons, influence, have a form of godliness, but no power, looks good, smells good, but it's evil. Amen? He who overcomes the world, who is he who overcomes the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Victory that overcomes the foundational influence of good and evil <laughs> of the world is your faith based on truth. It is truth because knowledge, when it's not understood, isn't really truth. But knowledge that it is understood is called revelation knowledge. So when you have revelation knowledge, it is part of the foundation of Christ Jesus. Revelation knowledge is what builds our foundation in the anointing of Christ Jesus. That's why many people might know the word but can't practice it. Because they're really not connected. Amen. And you got to remember that mixed doctrine will disconnect a person. The heart. The heart. See, when there's a connection, there's the heart of God. It's in you now. You know what pleases him. You know what displeases him. You know. <clears throat> Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Man, you get a lot of people that want to knock on your door and give you another doctrine. Amen? You run across all of these individuals. Watchtower. Is that what it is? Watchtower. The only watchtower I ever heard of was by Jimi Hendrix. And that was not the foundation of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Psalm 119, 89. All along the watchtower, that was the name of it. <laughs> One day I was telling my daughter about Jimi Hendrix because uh, I, I told her that there was a guy that used to play the guitar. He played left-handed. But he played upside down, the guitar. He, he played actually upside down. Can you imagine playing the guitar? I heard enough, I ain't playing with the right side up. 
So my daughter says to me, Dylan, how does he play it upside down? Does he hang from somewhere? I said, no. He turns the guitar upside down. She was young. <laughs> so she thought the guy was playing upside down. Like, <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 89, is everybody there? Let's speak it. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled where? Heaven. Forever your word is settled in? Heaven. There's nothing else settled in heaven. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. You establish the earth and it abides. They continue this day according to your ordinances. For all are your servants. Unless your law had been my delight, I would then have, been, have perished in my affliction. Now was his law his word. Yeah. I will never forget your precepts as his precepts his word. Yes. For by them you have given me life. I am yours, save me, for I have saw, sought your precepts. The wicked wait for me to destroy me, but I consider your testimonies. I have seen the consumption, consummation of all perfection, but your commandment is exceedingly broad. The word is settled in heaven. So the foundation was already established in heaven before it came here. Amen. And Psalm 138. In verse 1. Everybody there? I'll praise you with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing praises to you. I will worship towards your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above all your name. Let's say that again. You have magnified your word above all your name. And the day when I cried out, you answered me and made me bold with strength in my soul. All the kings, in other words, all the leaders of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. And how are they going to hear the words of his mouth? Through us. Yes, they shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord is on high, yet he regards the lowly, but the proud he knows from afar. Wow. And I'm going to close in Genesis 6. Oh, hallelujah. Genesis 6. So his word has been established in heaven and his word is above his name. But then he took his word and made his name. Does everybody get it? Amen. That's why in the name, because it's in the word, we can cast out demons. There's no other name where a demon runs. He don't run from Allah. He don't run from Buddha. He don't run from whatever. Whatever other... Demonic doctrine is out there. You don't run from none of them. In fact, you don't run from some Christians either. <laughs> they don't run from some Christians either. So-called Christians. But they carry a mixed doctrine. So they're on sinking sand. Genesis 6, verse 1. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God, the angels, the fallen angels, saw that the daughters of men that they were beautiful. So these angels put on flesh, came into the earth, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with them forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. 
There were giants, which were the offsprings of the connection and breeding of fallen angels and human women on the earth in those days called Nephilim. And also afterwards, when the sons of God, the angels, fallen angels, came into the daughters of men, hello, and produced offsprings, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. These mighty men of old, men of renown, were self-proclaimed kings and queens. Somebody get it? They call themselves gods and goddesses. That's where you have a lot of the mythical Greek philosophy and all the other stuff. And the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil when? Continually. So we have all of this. That's what Pharaoh was and all of them. They were the offspring they carried crowns and gowns and robes. Well, now you have about 99% of them, 95% of them, that have dropped their crowns, they've dropped their gowns, and they've dropped their robes, and they've put on suits and skirts. And they've infiltrated the world system, believing that they're God's gift to mankind. They control the economy. They control the banking system. They control the religion, I'm telling you. So these offsprings of these interbreeding is what produces and carries the doctrines of demons that they live off of. That is their foundation. There are three locations in the earth that no one has access to all owned by Satan. The Vatican, the um, city of London Bank, and Washington, D.C. Religion, economy, governmental, military cannot be touched by any country does everybody understand that? Even though that they're in a country, they're not of that country. Same thing with the Federal Reserve. Even though it's in the United States, it's not of the United States. They're all owned and controlled by Satan's kingdom, all on the doctrine of demons. False doctrine, that is their foundation. This is what we are battling with. Amen? Is everybody okay? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask for your mercies and grace that you continue to keep us alert so that we do not get sucked into any of this false doctrines. For many have fallen away, and the falling away will continue. You warned us. Many would fall from the faith, the true faith of the foundation of Christ Jesus, and be mixed with another doctrine. But you warned us. So, Lord, remind us. Holy Spirit, quicken to us. Tell us, Lord, when we begin to touch any of these <laughs> evil doctrines that have a form of goodness but are influenced by evil forces of wickedness. Lord, grant your people the wisdom that they need, the discernment that they need, that they may get through what is coming, that your name will be glorified as we stand on the true foundation of Christ Jesus and in the anointing of Christ in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.